do Acaso still offer good 4K action cameras in 2024? Their Brave 8 Lite model might give all the answers that we're looking for, so let's inspect! Well, let's be honest, 2023 has been boring about action cameras. 2022 as well, probably the only exception are those high-end, really polished action cameras, such as the GoPro Hero series, the DJI Osmo Action series, maybe the Insta360 devices, but everything which is budget-oriented or mid-range has been rather disappointing. And here's the new Acaso Brave 8 light, which comes about a year after the release of the original Acaso Brave 8, which I've had really high expectations about because of the really fantastic hardware. However, because of the software and the overall performance, it turned out to be a flop. So the 8 light is now on the spotlight and it's time to figure out which are the strong, the weak sides, how is the overall performance based on all these samples we are about to explore and basically get to know everything meaningful about this new 4K action camera. Great to meet you by the way, I'm the Tech Mishka, invite you to subscribe to the channel and now let's dive into the review. The launch price is unfortunately not what I hoped to see. I mean, not that it's too expensive, it's just that being above $200, it must be really good. Insta360's former generations and the second-hand GoPro or DJI Osmo Action Series might cost less than that, so Acaso really need to deliver with this one. The back looks nice, a flashback to GoPro's Hero Series from a few years ago, some specs on the outside. If you don't know much about these action cameras, they might trick you into believing that Brave 8 Lite is the real deal. It was not that easy to take it out again. Maybe a castle would have reworked this because it was the same way with the non light edition packaging a while ago. Here's the Brave 8 Lite itself. Well, we can say for sure that it has two displays and kind of nice looking housing, somewhat rugged, a compact size, three well positioned buttons. You can see that there's a removable battery. Inside the pack, there are a lot of accessories too. You may never need most of them, but could be that at some point some of them come handy. Having a second battery to rely on is for sure a great confidence booster. While Brave 8 Lite might not come with the style surrounding the best on the market, it is well packed and gives a lot of goodies for free. And since this is a thorough review and we want to have our assumptions and conclusions based on real evidence, let me guide you through the most important tech highlights. There's a powerful Amorella SoC inside. A decent Sony image sensor, the camera can record videos up to 4K 60 frames per second, has the so-called super smooth stabilization, the housing is 10 meters waterproof without a case, the storage supported are microSD cards up to 256 gigabytes, you can count on 4K HDR video footage, the battery is removable, there's support for Wi-Fi, and you can control and configure the camera via a smartphone app. If anything, well, the hardware specifications of this body are really decent because inside we have an Amborella SOC and, well, Amborella are famous for producing some of the best chipsets for action cameras and GoPro have been deploying those a few generations back. Now the latest Insta360 and DJI Osmo Action products are also based on Amborella SOCs, which means that we have high expectations about the overall performance. The image sensor inside, being a Sony IMX image sensor, is not very large, meaning low light performance might be hindered, but we also know that it should be a good one. And given the combo of SOC and image sensor, we can confirm that the 4K 60 frames per second promised resolution should be all right and it's not interpolated. And I'm saying this because there have been a lot of budget-oriented brands or mid-rangers who are kind of cheating about their maximum supported resolutions and frame rates. Now, after having said all of that, which is rather positive, if you're wondering why am I not sounding that excited? Well, it's because I started to discover a lot of things which are not quite right. And we can start with the user interface. 
It just shows that Acaso are not capable to go the extra mile and abandon their current business model to buy ready products made by big factories such as HD King, polish them a little and rebrand them. This is indeed the major difference between brands such as GoPro, DJI Insta360 and everyone else. The game is not only about the hardware, it's the software and the user experience that make the big difference. Sure, you can certainly use this one. The clunky interface is even not so bad as soon as you get used to it, but I can say with high degree of confidence that it is slowly responding, might come with some bugs, and serious software updates are very unlikely to happen. We can be quite happy to confirm that 4K 60p is real, seems to not be interpolated. We can also applaud the fact that there's 120 frames per second in 2.7K resolution recordings, meaning that you can have slow motion as good as what the 5-year-old GoPro Hero 7 is capable of. But once we take a closer look at the footage, oh boy, this dynamic range looks weird. Colors are also not as good, contrast is way up, sharpness is okay, it probably is fine for an action camera. And the 4K 60p resolution in most cases looks even alright if there's enough of sunshine and if you're not in motion because the EIS is not functional in this resolution. Unfortunately, no sign for 24 or 48 frames per second with most resolutions, which could be used for potentially some professional purposes. But given the overall image quality, I no longer think this is really worth implementing over here. Good is at least the quality of the housing, which should be okay underwater, but based on feeling and my instincts about tech are rarely wrong over here, I would avoid pushing a Casso Brave 8 Lite to its limits when I'm underwater with it. Here we go, vlogging test, 4K 30 frames per second is the resolution and the idea is to try out the microphones, the embedded microphones inside Brave 8 Lite, outdoors, a noisy street with kind of a test of the image stabilization. So what do you think? Comment down below. Please excuse my modest rant up until now, it's all based on the price point and the rather high standards that we want to see implemented at this point. If we put all of this aside, Brave 8 Lite is a decent choice for the summer vacation, especially if you need an ultra-wide angle footage and you don't want to risk the health of your smartphone or so. Slow motion, different frame rates and resolutions, some photo options, and that's pretty much it. The low light footage is… well, let's say the quality matches the expectations from the small sized image sensor inside and the expectations that we have set while reviewing the daytime footage. If you need side by side comparison, let me show it next to a GoPro Hero 12, which is in my opinion already the third best action camera at the moment. I think we can now explain the significant price difference between both. But let me for the record add DJI Osmo Action 1, it's a 5 year old action camera. It used to cost just below 200 bucks. The point is that Brave 8 Lite is simply not good enough as an action camera. You can use it as a web camera though, but nah, web cameras are being used indoors, so this won't be a good use case either because of the low light footage. The smartphone app hasn't changed much in the past two years or so, and you know, it should have changed. Because now, in 2024, this kind of interface is even harder to tolerate. On the other hand, if the price goes twice lower, I would have been happy even if it was just working. So, the drawbacks list is about to hurt this time, because to everything negative about the image quality and the stabilization, I'd add the smartphone app, the lack of in-camera quarter-inch mount for tripods, the poor quality of most accessories, the lack of regular updates, and let me stop here and give you the chance to join me in the comments and probably prove me wrong with this long list. Because I feel that brands such as Acaso are kind of done. I mean, obviously they cannot provide any innovations, they are not capable of providing good and timely firmware and software updates, and uh, overall what they can do is to buy ready products, rebrand them and sell them to you, if possible at a good price, for as long as you're ready to buy it and you're trusting in the brand, which is obviously not going to last that long given the experience we have with another similar brand called SJCAM. In short, the Brave 8 Lite, if you can find it at the price of $120, $130, yes, totally, go for it. It's a very good budget 
action camera. If they ask you to play 150 or 160, I would seriously consider to go out and check on eBay or similar resale websites where you can look for even a second-hand GoPro Hero or Osmo Action, even an Insta361R. That would be a lot better in terms of overall performance. For $200, the Brave 8 Lite is, in my opinion, a no-go. Well, could be that you think otherwise, so we can carry on the conversation in the comment section below the video. Do you feel that most of the budget action camera brands are about to die or not. We can talk about all of that in case you want to grab the best deal I managed to find about the Brave 8 Lite. You can check the video description area where I'm also going to link some good alternatives at kind of the same price range. So that's it about today's review. Thank you very much for watching. I'm the Tech Mishka. I hope you learned something new and if you enjoyed the video, consider subscribing and supporting my work here on the channel. Thanks for watching. I guess I'll see you in the next one. Bye.